Hello, good afternoon. Hope you're all well. Thank you for joining us. Just going to go through some of our usual checks at the start of this live stream. Uh, yeah, hope you're all well. Hope you've had a good weekend. Let's just check we got signed. Hope you're all well. Yeah, we have. So, as you can see, we got a love spoon inside the vice. Just closing it up there. Ready to go. And um, this is the design we're working on. Now, the nice part about this one, we're carving something a bit different when it comes to the wood. So today we're carving some walnut. Lovely timber to work with. And yeah, one that I enjoy using, but not one that I get the opportunity to carve that frequently. So hopefully you will enjoy seeing a different piece of wood being carved. The design we got in the uh, in the vice, just to share with you the idea, we got that eternity, that eternity sign we refer to it as. Some call it a trinity knot. Um, there are other names as well that it's given. So that's one of the main features. We've got a couple of daffodils. We've got a heart. This is like a, a pair of breaking waves, treble clef, and some stars. So that's the uh, that's the idea behind this design. Well, let's get into it. Let's do uh, a little bit of carving. So we start off with our eternity sign and initially we're doing those stock cuts down into the wood. So the normal sort of process that we would go through. Now anyone who is learning carving, anyone who's starting out, this is the method that we use. So you can see we've got it secured in a vise. We have, um, yeah, we, we start doing those stock cuts. In terms of how we hold the gouges, the tools that we work with, we keep both hands behind the blade and cut away from ourselves. So we're using those stock cuts, they mark the line, and the method that we, we sort of explain with it, the stock cut is cutting down into the wood, that then becomes a barrier. Other methods then that we're using, you can see that we have marked everything out using paper, so we put a paper design onto the wood itself and that gives us those guidelines that we can use to mark out our stop cuts so that just helps out especially if we're doing something that we're not used to doing so if it's something a little bit different a little bit unusual those stop cuts can be a really useful guide for us so in terms of the workshop a bit quieter um, at the moment, but that's not unusual for this time of year. We we are having um, bits of interest when it comes to Christmas and uh, you know some of the different items that we make more geared towards Christmas. But what we're mainly working on is getting all of our list of bespoke love spoons, getting all getting through that list basically, ready for where we tend to wind down a little bit over. The Christmas holidays. So, our focus is on this bottom panel at the moment. So we're well on our way to putting a lot of the stop cuts to marking out this carving. When it comes to the designing, then, when we're working with bespoke love spoons, um, what we're sort of doing is working out how to put the design together, working out what parts of the design, you know, we how we're going to order things then. So for example, this one, there was a particular budget that was put up um, initially as, as the sort of budget that the individual was looking to um, work within. Um, sort of a, an idea on size. So that's another consideration then is what size is the, the love spoon wanted. And then it's a case then of how do we put the symbols that are required into that design. So that's something, you know, that we, we consider. And if you're interested then in that side of how we, that side of things of how we work out what we're going to do and how we're going to do it, that's the process that we go through. So a lot of what we do is dictated to by the symbols that are required. That's the biggest consideration quite often in terms of the... Uh, the cost that's going to be involved, the complexity of the design, that sort of thing. So as you can see, as we're starting to cut, oh, 
Hello there. Glad you joined us. The carver's with us. Let us know if uh, anybody else has joined us as well. Always great to hear from anyone. Any questions as well? Any comments that you've got? It'd be great. Uh, yeah, great to hear from you. Um, I've noticed as well, we, we the, the channel itself, we've been having quite a lot of uh, um, views and view duration. So thank you all for watching our videos. We hope they're useful. We hope you enjoy them. Any questions you may ever have, we hope, you know, the idea with our channel is to help out. If you're interested in scroll sawing, wood carving, love spoons, if you're interested in making your own uh, videos even, put comments in and uh, if we can help out, we're always happy to do so. Now this one, you can see, the car to carve with walnut it is a lovely, lovely timber to work in. Most of what we're carving, as you probably noticed from our live streams, we use a lot of oak. And the reason for that, it's here in the UK, it seems to be quite a fashionable timber for us to work in. I've got to say, some of the darker woods, which seem more popular in the US, I absolutely love to work in. So, for instance, Dad, is his favourite is teak. Um, I like a variety, but when you get the chance to work in something like a piece of walnut, it is a lovely, lovely timber to use. And the finish that you'll get on it, it'll be a really um, rich colour. Oh, hello Arthur. Thank you for joining us. Great to have you with us. Nice. Oh, uh, always good to to hear from anyone who is uh, is joining us. Hope you enjoy the live stream. Um, here now, where we are in West Wales, they tell us there's a... A storm on its way, so tomorrow apparently it's going to be uh, high winds here, so uh, it'll be battening down the uh, the hatches. That is the phrase, isn't it? Battening down the hatches. I'm getting a, a thumbs up from uh, from Mum, so obviously uh, that is the right phrase that I'm thinking of. So you can see, we're starting now to work on this bottom part of the design. So I've... The way we sort of designed it, we've um, we're splitting it up into those separate little sections. So we've got that twist that we'll be working on afterwards, right at the bottom, as well as the bowl. We've got this heart then in the wave section, and um, we've got these stars above. But the first panel we're working on, that's what I tend to do with my carving, and the way I organise my designs is to put them into little sections and work on them as individual pieces. So as I said, our focus at the moment in the workshop is a lot on our bespoke work. Um, this morning we were working in a piece of oak and I'm trying to remember some of the symbols we had on there. Oh yeah, an interesting one. We, we had a love spoon we were working on. There was a flower on it and then some lovebirds and entwined hearts with the initials cut out, but probably the most um, Noteworthy symbol on there was Tower Bridge in London, which we've carved a couple of times. And um, yeah, interesting one that it's it's such a popular one for us to do. As Dad said, he, he, he thinks that one could be a really uh, popular little design to add. So with the flowers then, we work on the petals by just getting a little bit of depth on each individual one. So we just cut in down into the back of the trumpet. And then we create that sort of three-dimensional look with the flower by shaping the front of the trumpet, like so. So we sort of go and cut at a, what would it be, like a 45 degree angle down into the wood. And then we've got to shape the back of the trumpet as well. So all of that gets shaped around. Um, Arthur, in South Africa, wow. I would have thought you'd be having a little bit of, uh, little bit of different weather to ourselves then. Fantastic, thank you for joining us. Joining us from South Africa. You usually beat us in the rugby, in fairness. You won the last game in the Millennium Stadium. It was a close game, usually a close game. But in fairness, you do tend to get the better of us. But thank you for joining us. Great to have you here. 
So you can see then what we're going to do, we're going to just shape as well the back of the trumpet, just like so. And then the sides, sort of bottom and top. And then we put a little bit of a carving to get that daffodil just on, just on the front. North America, specifically Virginia, yes. Always good to have the carver with us. And uh, yeah, it was good speaking to you as well on the, uh, on the weekend. Nice to see the, uh, the family there, everybody getting ready. Everyone preparing, um, look, getting ready for Christmas. All going well, we are hoping that uh, ourselves, that we'd be able to see my wife's family in Barcelona. Although our governments here in the UK are doing the best to try and stop us from doing anything. But that's normal, we're used to that. So you can see now, we're just getting a little bit of depth on that, um, what they refer to, as I said, either the Trinity knot or what we call the Eternity sign. There's another name for it, which escapes me. Considerably warmer here, yeah. I would have, uh, I would, uh, would have, would have hoped so. It's uh, where are we now? We 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 must be at, uh, just a, a few degrees here. We're lucky in in West Wales, where um, this part of Wales has a, a very mild climate. The main thing that we we're, we're familiar with, though, is we have, I think it's. 200, around about 200 days of rain. So we're quite used to rain. But it's dry out there at the moment and it looks very, very calm, very still. And then they reckon the fun and games is gonna to happen tomorrow with the high winds. So you can see we're shaping both of those daffodils. So what we tend to do, whatever you do on the one, so what you're working on on the one side, you're then gonna try and replicate it and do on the other side. So that's the idea behind it. So we just shaped that one like so. Um, and again, we just do a little bit of carving. And because I carve sitting down, um, the other part with that then is that I carve as much as I feel I can in the one direction. I then turn the love spoon around in the vise and I start carving back in the opposite direction. So that's the process. Um, that I use for carving. This piece of walnut as well, we don't see a huge amount of walnut here. Um, this would have come in from some furniture. So this is a piece of reclaimed wood. And that is, um, that is our, our preferred choice. Always seems to me that the, whenever you get the furniture wood, it, it, it you know, nine times out of 10, or 99 times out of 100, is fantastic wood for us to work in. Uh, on the things in terms of what's happening here in Wales, latest one I heard about was that they're, they're gonna offer everybody in Wales a tree. So that's a, that's a positive idea in fairness to them. But um, we planted a few, a few more than just one tree, so be interesting to know what tree they're offering everybody and uh, hopefully we'll be able to add that to um, to our ongoing tree planting project. So, yeah, an interesting idea. So as you can see, as we carve, you get rid of that paper drawing and you see that beautiful wood, that beautiful grain coming through. And this is what we really enjoy bespoke love spoons because it gives us the chance to carve so many different things. And it's fantastic then to be able to play just a little role in the celebration of all sorts of different events and occasions. What we're also now doing, we're planning ahead, we're always planning to the future. And one thing that I'm hoping to do um, is to take us back in some ways to where, we, where we've always been as a workshop. Um, give you the background. When we started in 1975, we were always making different gift items. And it's through YouTube, actually, that we've gone back to doing more of that. Um, basically, because we do a lot with the scroll saw now, 
it's got us into making gift items again. And so that's going to be the plan for the next year or so is to, I would say, develop our online shop and develop our workshop here because we hope to start seeing more customers, more people, uh, more visitors. And um, we will, yeah, be making more gift items because we want to basically fill all of our workshop with items made by ourselves. Something that when our workshop was really busy, pre-COVID, that we just didn't have time. We could keep up with the demand for love spoons, but in terms of keeping up the display with other items we make, it's quite difficult. Is the tree being offered specifically now during the holidays or just as a way to get trees in the grounds? Uh, it's to get trees in the grounds. So it's a, it's a good idea. Um, but I'm not sure. It, it basically, the wording was, um, the wording of it is that everybody who want, would like a tree um, is going to have the opportunity to have a tree. Usually with our government, yeah, there'll be some sting in the tail. So uh, you'll have, usually what they do is they give you 10, there'll be 10 um, different steps that you have to meet the criteria for. And you usually get to about step seven or eight. And um, it's something really ambiguous, and so it means that you're not eligible. But hopefully that's not the case, because it would be quite a good idea. I know in fairness to them, when my eldest son, when he was born, um, there was a tree planted, uh, you know, they, they, they do that for every, they were doing for every child born in Wales at that time. They were doing a tree planted here in Wales, and also one in Africa as well. Um... But we'll see. We'll see. It was. It's. It. It could well be. I hope it's a positive thing that they're doing. Um, there's a very good chance, though, that it's a um, bit of uh, politics scoring cheap points. You never know. You can never tell with them. I'm looking for a gouge. I did use it over here. Yeah, it's over the other side of the bench. Um, we had a gentleman just came in and he wanted an engraving on another item, not made by ourselves. But he'd had something put on a, an item using pyrography, so burnt into the wood, and he wanted part of it taken out. So I was using this gouge on the other side of the bench um, to sort it out for him. There we go. So you can see that beautiful dark colour that you get on the walnut coming through. If, ever ha if any of you haven't worked in walnut, um, yeah, if you ever get the chance to carve it, it is a lovely, lovely timber. As is um, things like teak. So teak, for instance, is widely avoided here uh, because they have a saying where they say, oh, it's as tough as teak. So people who do carving, they think it's going to be really hard and difficult to work with. And um, for ourselves, couldn't be further from the, tr the truth. It's a lovely timber to work in. And it... Uh, Finishes beautifully too. It's interesting as well with the woods, how things go through. Um, I think that's called bureaucracy. Yes, it is indeed. Indeed it is. Um, the, um, yeah, the, 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 the interesting one with um, timbers like this, it sort of goes through fashions. So walnut furniture was, you know, that was regarded as, really expensive stuff and some of these timbers and I think it still is but what's happened is that darker furniture a lot of the time people don't want it and so uh, if nobody wants it there's no demand for it sadly the price it uh, goes down on the weekend as well we um, I went to a place and they had some they had some old furniture in there and you could see all the beautiful work the hours you could see on it that have been put into uh, making it. It's fasc fascinating. Whenever we have chance to, where we used to be allowed to go and see things, we'd um, we go and, uh, if you went to stately homes or anything like that, some of the craftsmanship on the different items, beautiful to see. Fantastic, some of the carvings and and the different styles as well. You can see we're just shaping that. Um, again, we're going to go around. So 
So what we're doing when we're coming around the outside, I'm seeing how far I can sort of go before I feel that I would be better off carving in the opposite direction. That side I'm managing to get right away around. This side I reckon to there, and that's as, as far I need to turn it around and carve back in the opposite direction. So this, this, this is the thing. Sometimes people ask us, why do you not wear gloves and things like this for protecting your hands? Um, and I think that comes from where people hold and carve, I assume. Um, but it's the reason, the big part of the reason is because if we lose that sense of feeling, that sense of touch, that has quite a big impact on, um, on the carving itself. So there, this part here, see what I'm getting at, that is where the, the grain is running in the opposite direction. So you get past that critical point and you need to carve it back in the opposite direction. So yeah, if we just come down to there, I think we're ready. We're gonna turn it round in the vise once more. The double bevel on the, if it is very effective, I usually carve them with a flat top. Yeah, um, basically there's, there's, you know, as you, as you know with it, it's, um, and I'm interested to know, you call it a tri, tri, tri I've, 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 the, the word I've seen before, and that's the one that I couldn't remember. Yeah, I mean, basically, the reason that I do that is that's just my that's just the style of, of carving that I use. Um, I think it gives it a, a, a nice sort of finish. I always bevel all of the edges. Part of that, I'll tell you where that comes from, because I'm a bit heavier handed. Dad now, he would have carved it as you would, similar to yourself, where he would carve it more flat. But because I'm heavier handed, Every now and then I'd have a carving I'd be working on and I would just um, bruise, I suppose would be the, the word, bruise the edges. And to cover up that, when I was learning to carve, I used to bevel the edges of everything. And then over time it became a, it became a style that stuck. And so I always do it and it's gone on from there. So I think the moral of the story, it was a case of turning your weaknesses into your strength. So that's how it came about. We keep that, we, we, we sort of develop the, a style to suit how I carve and a finish, again, that suits, that suits my, uh, my heavy handedness. And that's what we sort of, uh, that's what we sort of, uh, we did. When I first started carving, see, dad would always say to me, um, why are you carving so deep? And I'd be like, well, I'm not trying to carve deep. Um, I said, oh, you don't need to go as deep as that. You're going too deep. You, do, you don't need to go as deep on your carving. And so for a long time, I thought, oh, right, I'm, I'm not doing this right then. And then over time, I just realized that it was just natural to myself. And that I always sort of recommend anyone who's learning carving, anyone who's interested in having a go at wood carving, just find your own style, find your own method find out what works best for yourself. Look at that, lovely to see, lovely to see that beautiful wood coming through. I've said it time and time again always, if you're trying to kind of upstage the, uh, the carving, if you're trying to uh, do a carving and, and sort of show off, if you're trying to upstage the wood, nah, you're, you're you're fighting a, a losing battle. The wood itself, such a beautiful material and such a lovely finish that you'll get in it. Now we're gonna go on now and do finish off this little panel. So I've got three or four sections in my mind that I'm working on on this carving. And to finish off this first one, we gotta do a little bit of detail on the, um, the daffodil, first of all. So we do the inside of the trumpet. So we mark that out with just a little curved gouge. And we're just using that gouge just to take that center out, give it a little bit of depth. Same on the other side. So we mark out the center where that will go. And I just pop, pop a little bit away, just like so. And then we're going to do just a little tiny detail. 
If I can find the right gouge, there it is. Using a, a skewer chisel, just like so. There we are, just to put a little bit of detail on each of the petals, just to finish it off nicely. Now the way I'm gonna go from here, we got this heart and waves section to do next. So you can see we're just finishing off. There we are. Yeah, we got all of those petals done. So we're gonna just move the spoon down and with the heart, we're gonna start off by doing one the one side and one the other side. And when it comes to the waves, we got that stop cut to go around the top, but we're also, we're gonna create that wave as if it's like a spilling wave to get a bit uh, surf terminology on everyone. Um, so we're just gonna bring that in like so, that one there. And the reason for that, we're marking out those lines. So as we're carving deeper into the wood, we're gonna lose the lines that the paper drawing is, is giving us. And so by putting those lines on there, it shows us as we carve the depth into the design, it shows us where those lines are gonna be. It has a lovely great, it has indeed. Yeah, really nice piece of wood. One thing I'm gonna do with this section as well, um, the only problem is all of my sandpaper on the bench is quite warm. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna sand over it a little bit just to take any, just a little bit of roughness. I know some will be looking and may wonder, well, why aren't you using a block when you're sanding? You shouldn't use your hand because it follows the contours. But as I've explained on a number of occasions, um, the difficulty with sanding stuff like this, if you use a block, it just sands over the top. So it can't get into that detail. And we just want to round off a little bit where we've done those different details. There we are. I like as well, a, a job like this one here, it's a nice one to demonstrate because the symbols, there's different things on here, but there's nothing that I'm, that's creating a big distraction for me. So sometimes when I'm demonstrating stuff, I'm a little distracted because there's something in the design and I'm conscious of it and concerned Funny, really, because uh, you just have something sort of niggling at you, how you're going to work that out. And it just takes your, a lot of your concentration away. So it's the same again with the heart as we've done with the other ones. We do the stop cuts down into the woods and then we just bevel the edges just to round it off a little bit. And as we continue, we're working further and further, higher up the love spoon itself. And so we're gonna go around the, the stop cut, where we've marked that stop cut. We're gonna put that stop cut all around the wave. I think actually, we're gonna go across to our bigger gouge. When it comes to the gouges, we're using those Addis and uh, Henry, uh, sorry, um, Herring Brother gouges. So this here, <clears throat> excuse me, we mark the stop cut, but you'll see we use different methods with our, with our tools when we're working with them. So this here, I'm gonna just use the reverse edge of the gouge just to cut into the woods, like so. And so we're shaping what will be that wave. This background then, we're gonna carve that back the other way and that will sort of disappear behind the wave itself. So let's have a little look. We put that stop cut down into the woods, like so. Mark that as we're going, <clears throat> excuse me. And then use the reverse cutting edge just to bevel that wave shape. So it's just to show you can cut in the conventional way, but you can also cut using the reverse edge. That's it. And now we'll come, we'll just separate the two waves away, away from each other. And also separate the waves away from the bottom of the treble cleft. Another part when it comes to the designing, 
Um, we we sort of work out how to put things together. So we're always trying to give the design strength. Now you'll see this with the love spoon. You'll see different designs where, um, for want of a better word, there's slight issues in them. And that's why we use a framework on quite a lot of our spoons. So it's, so to give you the example, this piece here with the stars and the treble clef, they're protected inside the, um, the surround. And that just makes the design at the top then a little bit stronger. And you're protecting any of those delicate points because they're protected in front of that, inside that framework. The hope is it reduces the chances of breaking the love spoon. It can still happen. Wood is wood. So uh, different things can go wrong. But if you protect it inside a framework, it should reduce the chances of you having any, any problems like that. Um, I think we're going to... I was just about to start on this top section, but I think we're going to carry on focusing on this... Um, wave section. So we're going to try and get this completed. So we're just going to cut up just below the bottom wave. Now I'm going to turn it around in the vise. And the first thing I'm going to think of is to drop that background, just to try and drop that behind where those waves are going. So we want them a little less um, we want that background a bit less prominent. Yeah, that's something we're always thinking of when it comes to designing and creating is, is how do we get strength in the design? Because uh, it's always going to be a frustration. Um, we just completed a love spoon that was around about, around about 80 centimetres in length. And... Um, you're always looking at that and you, you, you're, you're thinking how can, how, what methods, what ways can we use to get enough strength into the design itself? And what we find then, people will bring drawings and designs to us and sometimes email us drawings that they've done. And that's quite often the alterations that we need to do when other people do their own designs is to give the design itself enough strength that it's not going to have issues when we're making it. So, finishing off the heart, that's relatively straightforward. We just gonna bevel that edge, but again, we're gonna come round the outside and bevel the in, insides. There we are, and it just gives us that style. That's my carving style, is beveling the edges of things. So we're going to concentrate again on where the waves, where we got like those spilling waves. So we're just going to shape them back the other way. So there's three little, three little points where the waves are just spilling around the heart. It's good fun as well when it comes to designing because what happens a lot of the time, people will, will have a proposal um, for what they would like, what elements they would like in their Love Spoon design. Um, and it's fun then to try and put that all together and to create something unique, create something different and something that hopefully they, they'll be pleased with. What we quite often find as well is when we do our initial drawing, um, people will say, oh, is there any chance you can change this, this, and this, you know, X, Y, and Z, or can you add this to it? Or, and so what we, you find is that when we're designing things, there may be two or three drawings before you get to a final, a final design to work from that everybody is happy with. What we always do though, is that we always make sure that as the as a, as ourselves being the carvers, the the maker, that you are happy with it. It's no good 
if you can see a problem or you're not happy with something because you've got to remember you're going to have to make it so you have to be happy with what what you're making after this one i think we've got um two more designs that we're working on before uh, christmas and that will be us caught up with the uh, bespoke designs let's have a little look yeah i think that's coming along nicely although i am looking upside down so that may be misleading me a bit the idea as well with the drawing you had the impression of the waves there but i always feel with the carving that gives us a lot of license to um really bring out bring out the design and it's through the carving we can really really develop the design that we're that we've drawn out quite often people they're surprised when they see the finished love spoon they, they, they will say that the the drawing didn't quite do it justice but the carving gives us an opportunity to shape things more round things off more and to give it a more a more clear form and a more clear shape and I definitely feel with this one here that when we're carving the waves it is an occasion where it should be we should be able to give it a more clear wave sort of style that is a beautiful piece of timber to work in it's always a shame to break up old furniture we don't sort of do it and relish doing it it's it's a shame that nobody wants it and that you know that's its best use is to be broken up but it's fantastic to work with so we really do enjoy yeah we do enjoy the wood and it's nice from one point of view where we can sort of give it a new a new lease of life then it would be a shame to think that some of this ends up in landfill and being thrown out or being burnt and things like this it's too nice to be used They're too nice not to be used there we are so far so good it all seems to be coming together quite nicely there i'm just going to bring that down just so there's a a steady flow from that line uh, as we mentioned last week we have managed to complete our love spoon to record 2021 some stage in january there will be um, a youtube short showing the carving of that one there that's been good fun for us, is making a few YouTube shorts, and it's been uh, a nice way to carry on sharing um, the Love Spoon carving, because we've been doing more videos on the scroll sawing and less on the Love Spoon carving, but through YouTube shorts, we can share a, a one minute video showing some of the carving that we do on the spoons. Uh, when it comes to ways, I like to think of the Japanese block prints. Oh, I'll have to check that out. You're saying the furniture from the bin, you're saying, exactly, yeah, maybe sad, but it's also kindness. Yeah, it, it, it's a real, um, I mean, we what we're doing, the, the furniture quite often, we used to go to the furniture sales and we would be bidding on the pieces that nobody wanted. And then, um, they'd, to be honest, they'd think we'd gone quite mad because they'd see us outside breaking it apart. And they'd be thinking, well, why have you just bought that if you're breaking it apart? And it's because the... We, we'd have to transport it back to the workshop um, and we only need the wood as opposed to the furniture. And then the other thing that we do is that we buy from charities and so um, they're, they're sort of collecting the, 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 the funds, the money for, for their charity uh, and other, otherwise it would just be um, just be thrown out. I'd be honest, I, I'm... I'm I am enjoying this one. This is a, a design and a carving. It's not a complicated carving. It's not a complicated design. But I am really... I am enjoying bringing out those waves. 
this was the part of the design that um, I thought would be far nicer when it was carved than the initial drawing and it's proven so. It's always nice when um, you have that idea and you can bring it out. So we're creating where we're creating surface style waves, those spilling waves. Taking me back to many years ago, this when I used to do a bit of um, used to do a bit of the, the, the coaching. We used to do surf life saving coaching locally. And uh, you had to learn all about the different waves and the rip currents and things like that. What's a good wave? What's not such a good wave? What's a good surfing wave? What's not a, not a good one? That sort of thing. What are dangerous waves? All sorts. I can you show you something. I'm giving new life to old pieces. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, just before we started the live stream today, I'm going to come back to this and I'm going to carry on with that one. Sorry to cut across myself. Um, but yeah, um, we had a gentleman came in today and he had a, um, it was like a cheese board and um, it, it was left in a drawer basically. And it had an engraving on it that he wanted to take part of it out. And he was thinking that somebody else could have it and it would be, um, it would be nice for them and they could use it. And he said, can you take that part of the engraving out? So he said, it's just stuck in the, Stuck in the cupboard, nobody's using it. So again, you're giving it a new lease of life and uh, hopefully it can be used and enjoyed again by, by somebody else. And we scour all sorts of different, different places. We've had furniture from everything from Facebook Marketplace. Tend to find things like eBay is, is sort of out of our price range, to be honest with you, but local charities, local furniture shops. Even our people just ringing us. We've had people dropping things off on the back of a wagon. Um, double glazing companies, that's another one that can be a treasure trove when it comes to unwanted wood that we can give uh, a new lease of life to. So what I'm doing here, initially, I'm gonna drop all the stars down to a lower level and then I'm going to start focusing on the stop cuts and doing some detail, um, some detail on the uh, the treble clef. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use all those stop cuts. We've got two more stars. Just get them out. What it is by dropping the level down on the stars gets them out of the way, and by getting them out of the way, that can um, that allows me to focus more attention on that treble clef. So that's what we're gonna do. Push them back, push them down into the carving, get them out of the way. Get the, it's just dropping the level. So when we were doing the carving of the uh, tower bridge earlier on, that's what we were doing. You're getting all those different levels, making them, um, sometimes I do the same as well with the surround. Drop the level down to get it out of your way. So as you're doing the carving, then it's it's not blocking you from from working. There we go. Certainly proved to be a beautiful piece to work on. So those stars, we've carved those down into the wood in the one direction. These ones are pretty good below the treble clef. Um, I'm going to turn it round in the vise. I'm going to carve those back the other way. I'm also going to get some depth done on the surround as well. On eBay, they're trying to flip the items for profit spot on yet. The good deal was made when they bought the piece initially. Yeah, spot on. Um, it's something then, you know, anybody who is uh, looking for wood, uh, I, I, a different, I've had a look around on eBay and generally I find that it's massively overpriced. So for instance, we've got a video coming up that we've mentioned a couple of times where we, it'll be an ongoing one, probably won't end up being on the channel for, a long, long time because it's where we bought a piece of furniture 
and we're going to see how much our investment that we made in it is £65 from a charity shop and we're going to see how much we can manage to turn that piece into. So what's the uh, what's the final amount? Um, and that's basically, this is a family workshop. That's what we've done over the years is, is to, um, that's how we've survived. There used to be a program here, a children's cartoon called The Wombles. Have a look on uh, on YouTube for that one. See if uh, see if you find that one if you're not from the UK. The Wombles of Wimbledon, and it's a bit like being a womble a womble because we use things that people just don't want. And um, yeah, we bought this piece of furniture, and if I was just working out the value of it, if when we when we break it up, of what it would be worth just in the woods. Because the panels, you'll see just individual panels being sold for 20 and 30 pounds. Well, when you've got eight panels and you've only paid 65 pounds for it, there is, people are making money just on buying furniture, breaking it up and selling on the panels. Ourselves, we would rather keep it and make it into something we can use. It's not as easy though. There are other sides to it where... It's not a, just a, a straightforward thing of buy furniture, sell it and the rest of it. You, you have got to be careful because over the years, there have been times when we've been caught out. Um, oh, I look so close. Yeah, that, no, it's, that's going to be an interesting one, that, one, that is. Um, I've, made, I've made a number of bespoke spoons from it and already we are we're north of £500 easily. <laughs> On that initial investment so it shows that it's uh, it's well worth doing yeah when it comes to the the furniture it's not as straightforward as that because um, one thing we'll demonstrate in the video you have to break it all up the other thing over the years sometimes you'll get caught out because some of the furniture making god they did a good job of covering up sometimes when they were they were sort of laminated or you know they were veneers that sort of thing and um the other thing, you, you you have to have a good look around for woodworm and anything, wood-boring insects. I'm thinking now as well, with with, Ar with Arthur there, a friend of mine, this is a story, goes back, a friend of mine, he went to South Africa and he brought back a bowl. And the one day I was chatting with him and he said, I can't understand that bowl. I'm always dusting. And I went, what? He said, yeah, he said, I'm always dusting around that bowl. And I saw his sounds of his got a wood boring uh, insect in it well it was a south african version of um woodworm basically i'd never seen anything like it it was the most aggressive thing i've ever seen and i said to him i said oh i said unfortunately you're gonna have to burn that i said that's absolutely riddled and there was nothing left when he went to went to burn it it just he put a match to it and it just went up in a puff of smoke because um that's how ferocious this wood boring insect it was Never seen anything like it here before. And the uh, the other part with that story, his daughter had had that bowl and she'd been in university halls for six months. So I dread to think if that managed to get into the, the woodwork of the university halls where she was staying, uh, where she was staying, goodness me, they may have a few problems there now. But it was extremely aggressive. But it's just another side of it then. It's not as straightforward as just buying any old furniture. You really have to check out what you're doing. And we've been caught out ourselves. We bought a piece of furniture and thought, oh, great, we've done well there. Got it on and thought, ah, I don't believe it. We've missed a certain thing in it. And you've, uh, you've lost your investment. But not very often. Generally speaking, we've done very well on it. But it isn't. It's not an easy, a simple process. And then you've got all the breaking up of the furniture as well, which takes takes its time. But we do think it's a worthwhile, worthwhile process. There we are. So you can see we're just about getting that shape of the treble clef. Turn it round in the vise once more. We'll have to turn it round again because we're going to work on that surround. So we're just going to drop that level down, 
just like so. Treble clefs, there's something that we carve quite regularly. Um, stars, don't carve a lot of them, but we make quite a few of them on the scroll saw. They're popular Christmas decorations, that sort of thing. We had one, and i got got to confess, it's not originally my design. It was one that um, mum and dad, years ago, they brought back from a Christmas market, and it's a shooting star. And that's a popular, popular one that we do. And more recently, and again, this, this will be on our channel next year, we, we show the process we use for making 3D decorations. Probably we've, we've done a couple of Christmas videos for this year, so it will be on our channel for next year, that one. And we've got a 3D star that we make with the, a nativity in the middle. That, and uh, again, that's a popular design that we have. But that is one of our designs, in fairness as opposed to the shooting star, which isn't. So as we're going along, you can see we're getting rid of all of that paper on the front. And we see all of that dark, beautiful grain of the, the walnut coming through. Particularly rich color on this one here. Dad did even, did even su suspect that it might be the black walnut, but I think the black walnut is a shade darker than this again, so I think it is our native walnut. Very aggressive wood borers here, and very hard to kill off too, typically found in traditional untreated handmade pieces. Yeah, that's exactly what he had, um, and it was absolutely lethal. Basically, um, what happened is, is I said, can I see the piece? And I said, oh, have you got anything like a little spike? And as I was pushing the spike to look at it, it, it had it, it, it almost like these um, little jaws on it that was sort of going for the spike. It was so aggressive. I said, you want to burn that straight away? And he put a match to it and it just went poof and gone. As long as you don't get home and realize it came from Ikea. Absolutely, yeah. Unfortunately, we've had the odd piece because years, I mean, some of the things that they do, even this piece that we've been talking about, um, you have to be really careful they were really, some of the skills, joining, wow, they were, they were clever, you know, and, and they are clever in the furniture um, industry. You have to really look closely sometimes because some of the joins that they do, they can be really hard to detect. And so you mark out a piece, you start making it, and then you realize halfway through, you're working on two pieces of wood that are being joined together. That can be... A little frustrating, we'll say. Yeah, that the, the wood boring insects you got out there in South Africa. Wow, I've I've never seen our um, like for instance um, the uh, customs in New Zealand and Australia. They're quite funny about any wooden items. You, you have to declare everything when it comes to wooden items going into Australia and New Zealand. And I always sort of think, well, our native woodworm here, I can't see that it would survive too well. It's quite a lazy, sort of slow um, thing. And it's, um, how can we explain? It's just a little grub and then it goes into a fly and then it goes back into the wood, that sort of thing. And on it goes. I can't see that it would do too well, possibly more so in New Zealand, but I can't see it doing particularly well in Australia. Um, but you, you never know. I'm not an expert in these things. And um, they, they won't let anything in unless it's declared, that's, that sort of thing. But um, the one you got out in South Africa, wow, if that got established in other countries, I could see that that would be quite, potentially quite, quite destructive. One ferocious, ferocious wood boring insect. Impressive then, frustrating I can imagine, but not to say though that our wood boring insect, it's, it's pretty uh, destructive as well because it, once it's cut those lines in the wood and we find it here where we have it, a lot in old church furniture and things like that and in cottages because they're sort of humid and damp. It's a perfect, perfect breeding grounds for them. Yeah, so you can see we're well on now. We've got rid of most of the paper 
off our top part of the panel, a little bit there, and I'm going to carve that round just to get rid of that other piece. Now then, we're going to work on this surround at the top. Now if you're ever wondering why do we do that one there, we're always thinking um, in practical terms. So you'll see different Love Spoon designs and sometimes I'd be looking at them, or Dad would be looking at them and he'd be thinking, well, how are you supposed to hang that? So we're always thinking of practical things whilst we use that surround to give it strength. We're also thinking of the practicality of how do you hang your Love Spoon. So that's why you, you see a lot of our Love Spoons with that little button on the top. Most love spoons are hung on the wall, so we design them with a little button at the top so you've got a place to hang them with. We use different methods for hanging the um, spoons, but that's where we design most of ours, specifically with a point for hanging them on. If you weren't going to do that on there, you could use that loop on the treble clef for hanging. You can always drill a hole in the back, but... Our preference, we think it finishes them off nicely as well, is to have a specific place in the design for them to be hung on. You'd also, on this one, you'd be able to hang it in between the waves and in between the um, the Celtic Eternity sign, the Trinity knot. The other one, I can't say it properly, but the one you mentioned there in the, uh, in the comments. So we just take in just a little bit of depth down into the wood, like so. One thing I tend to do on bespoke love spoons, when I finish carving the front, I will carve the back a little bit just to take off the sharp edges. I don't do that on all of our love spoons, but I tend to do it on the bespoke spoons because they are more um, individual, more one-offs. So we just spend a little bit of time taking off the sharp edges. So I will demonstrate that for you, what I mean. We just work on this surround a little bit. And other than that, a lot of the attention now with the workshop is, uh, yeah, towards sort of Christmas. But um, the truth is, is most of the things we're gonna make for Christmas, we made them by this stage. And after Christmas, our attention starts to turn towards St. Valentine's, another occasion, and here we are. I'll ask, put it in the comments section if you know what it is, uh, an occasion here in Wales called St. Dwinwin's Day. Dieth Santa Dwinwin. Does anyone know the story? Of Saint Winwin. Very appropriate for a love spoon carver. Let us know in the comments if you know what that one's all about. It was one of the, uh, it was that particular occasion that very much gave us our first taste of, um, well, we'd always had people in from, from the US in the workshop very much gave us our first test of just how big the US is because we were featured. Absolutely no idea. There you go. Check that one out. Santus Dwinwin. Saint Dwinwin is the Welsh patron saint of lovers. So that's why we claim, see, that Wales is the most romantic country on earth because we've got two Valentines here, see? So on the 25th of January, we have Saint Dwinwin's Day. And it's quite a sad story, but um, she was granted three wishes. And one of her wishes, she asked for happiness for true, the true lovers. So, uh, and it's something most people in Wales have never heard of St. Dwynwyn. I've read the story, but my memory fails me. Yeah, most people here in Wales, if you ask them what day is St. Dwynwyn's day, they would have no idea because um, it's not something that is widely known. What happened where um, we had uh, CBS News Sunday mornings came in oof, probably about five years ago now. 
and it was fascinating for us. It was a gentleman by the name of Connor Knighton, and he does a, um, it was like an island hopping type series, I think they called it. And there's what they call St. Dwynwyn's Island up in the north of Wales, near Anglesey. But there's not a massive story and there's not a lot done about St. Dwynwyn. So they were trying to get some sort of story out of this for sharing on the programme. So somebody obviously had the idea, can we tie it in with a Welsh love spoon? It's the usual thing, what's a Welsh love spoon? And then when they looked into it a little bit, they tied it in with the love spoon and they wanted to see how a love spoon was made, so they came here. What was fascinating for us about it was that when we were featured on that programme, it started going live. Um, it was around about two, three o'clock in the afternoon in the, it, it, for us here in the UK. So it would have been morning for yourselves for any of you who are in the US. Um, and we could sort of follow as it went across the country because our online shop went completely mad and we'd never seen anything like it before. We spent, it was probably two or three weeks just packaging spoons that we sold. Uh, never seen anything like it before, never seen anything like it since. And it, But it was just fascinating and you just realise how tiny Wales is in comparison to so many other places in the world. But what was interesting, you could see how it would go from um, the different time zones. So you would have a run of sales and then it would go a bit quieter and you'd think, oh, there we are, that's stopped now. And then it would, it would start somewhere else and it would go, you could see how it went all across the, the country. And it resulted, uh, when they put it up on afterwards on their, um, they put it up on advertising on their, web suit, uh, on their website, and I've got a screenshot somewhere of their website because you had a photo. It was Dad who did the uh, TV programme with the, with the presenter, because he's, he's the more authentic looking woodcarver. And um, when they put it up on their, uh, uh, on their website, there was a photo of Dad, and right next to him there was a photo of Donald Trump. So we got a screenshot of that one, because we did think that was quite hilarious. Thomas the Woodcarver next to Donald Trump. Just happened that the two stories, they posted them side by side. But yeah, interesting that St. Dwin Wednesday, that will be our focus then, is, is starting to look... Um, what we're going to do, are we going to do new design? We usually do something in and around St. Dwin Wednesday. And um, maybe do, we quite often, we've done a, a, a sort of bit of a, a St. Dwin Wednesday special. And then we do stuff for Valentine's as well. So, Although, between you and me, we've never done a huge amount in terms of the workshop for those occasions. So it's never sort of been a, a busy, busy time. Oh, we've got two visitors in the workshop now. Hello, anyone here? Hello, Hello Nico. So we got Nico and Sammy have just joined us. Have you had a good day in school, boys? Yes. Good, yes. good. Have you been practicing your school play? Yes. And tell everyone, Nico, what are you in the school play? Joseph. You're Joseph. And you start you started off as a king, didn't you? Yeah, then got promoted to us. You were an innkeeper. And then and now Joseph. So he's he's they've given him the job of being um of being the carpenter. I think they should have known that from the outset, shouldn't they? So like Daddy and Daddy and Gramps and the carver. And we got half here as well, they're all wood wood carvers. So Nico's another one in it in his play. But you haven't got to do any wood carving, have you? Yeah, but I just pretend to, pretend to do it like this. Ah, because you know how to do it, don't you? Yeah. That's it. So you can see we're well on as well with this Daddy, spoon. Daddy, do carpenters like cross spoons? Oh, I'm sure, yeah, we, well, it's, well, it's wooden, cross, see? Yeah, cross spoons are made out of wood. That's right. So yeah, I'm sure we, we, can, we can do something like that. There's well, more, I just noticed on here, does more authentic equal the number of wrinkles? Yeah, he, 
he 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 fits the demographic for a, a wood carver apparently far far better than myself. What are you saying, sorry, Nico? Daddy. Yeah. In Minecraft, you have to know how to make the stuff out of wood because pretty much everything in Minecraft you need to use wooden stuff. That's it. Just yeah, like a carpenter. Yeah, like crafting tables, which used to be called wood, 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 wood benches. Wood That's right. Benches. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and they're made out of wood, and then tools. You need sticks to make them. I do think you're going to be a wood carver, Nico. Yes. Yeah, you're going to be a wood carver like Daddy and Gramps. Yes. And and crossbows. You need you need sticks. Doing arrows, you need sticks. That's it. Crossbows are more stronger, but they're but they're harder to make in Minecraft. But um, but they're also longer to learn. Arthur, Arthur just pointed out on you, Nico, that you've been dethroned already. Do you know what that means? What? It means they got rid of you as a king. Dethroned, because a king's on on a throne, see? So you lost. You you did. You lost as a king, but don't worry. You'll survive as a carpenter, wouldn't you? Yes, because if I didn't, you wouldn't have survived as a carpenter. Exactly. And you get you get more you get more fun out of it, see, because instead of being a king, you get to play with wood all day. I know what I prefer. What? Well, it's more fun, isn't it? Playing with wood all day. Yeah, instead of just sitting on your throne. On your throne, not your crown. Throne all day. Yes. Around. That's it. You got it right, Nico. Because six um, years old and he's figured out life. Yes. So a king just sits on his throne like, do this, do that, do this, do that. Exactly. And the carvers point out. You remembered our conversation on the weekend. You weren't promoted to be in Jesus because you couldn't fit in the manger, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. You're too big. That's why we use a little doll. That's right. There we are. Right, so you can see that we're now on to our twist on the stem. But our stable is made out of wood planks, so instead they wrap this um, paper around it look, it look like logs. Did they do a nice job making the manger? Yes. Good. They made the stable, it's well, but we can't fit in it. It's basically out of wooden ladders. But the screw is very rusty, and so that's why you don't sit underneath it. Right. Because, because the screw so you can't sit in the you can't sit in the stable because it's got rusty screws. Yeah, and they will pull that. Oh dear. There we are, and with that, Nico's just exited on left on the left hand side. What they call it on the, on left? Oh, he's back. Right, so you can see, can you see what we're doing, Nico? We're working on the twist. So we're just working on that Celtic twist down towards the bow. Imagine if there was an Easter performance. Yeah, you'd have to practice for that too, wouldn't you? Yeah, but probably after, probably after Christmas. After Christmas. So we're going to, again, those same simple ideas where you're working on those stock cuts. So you cut down into the woods, and then you use that stop cut as a barrier, and then cut into the woods. Barrier? As a barrier? Yeah. Like the block in Minecraft, the barrier block. There we are. Oh, I don't know about that one. But the barrier in this scene, Nico, can you see? We cut down into the woods, and then we use both hands on the gouge, make sure it's secure in the vise, and we cut away just like so. Can you see? Much so more we, different to the that barrier. It's not like your Minecraft barrier, is it? No, because that's basically the red cross block. It when on creative you see it when you hold it, but if you stop holding it, you can't see it. But you may as well. Survival, even if you hold the barrier, you still can't see it. You may notice from Nico that he's rather a fan of Minecraft. Isn't it, Nico? Yes. That's right. You can see we're shaping that wood on the one side and we shape on the other side as well. Stage right, that's the term I was thinking of. We entered and exited on stage right. Spot on. I couldn't think of it. Stage right, there goes Nico, stage right. 
Well, that's what they put. When they had the, the scripts, they'd have a queue and things like this, and they'd tell you what to do, and it would say, exit, stage right. Or exit, stage left. So we're just shaping all of that one there. And we're also going to come down to here. I hope that's just about in shot. I think it is. Yeah, I think we are just about just in shot there. And what we do, see, we, we carve to there. So this is the point here. Good one for everybody to see in terms of that is where the, that what we refer to, that critical point where the grain's going in one direction and we need to turn things around. There you go. Your, your... There's a lot of the black and white comments. Yeah, that's the carver, that is. That's our friend in in Virginia. In America. Yeah. Oh, we Who we spoke, spoke to on the weekend. On the phone. That's the one. Watch my tripod there, though, Nico. So you can see where you've got that critical point, where we reach the centre. We have to turn it back around, and you can match it back up. There we are. You say hello to everyone, though, Nico. Good, good. Hello. There we are. Right, so, and who to are finish off, red or Nico, don't kick the tripod. Don't worry. Right, well, that one there, Nico, that's Arthur. And where do you think Arthur is? Um. There you go. Did you see it move? That was where you kicked the tripod, see? Don't worry, though. We've still, we're still there. We're um. still on. Well, Arthur, he's in South Africa. You know where South Africa is? No. No, all the way down. So you've got to go, you'd have to cross all of Europe and then all of Africa and then right down the bottom of Africa, you've got South Africa. There we go. A long, long way away. Wait, how many countries would you have to travel through? Oof. A lot, Nico. You'd have to travel over lots and lots of countries. What if we're in the closest country to Africa? No, but we're, we're, we're not. We're a long way away. But what if we were? Well, you'd still have to cross a lot of countries, see? You'd have to cross all of Europe, all of Africa. Long way away. So you can see we're cutting down into the woods. Yeah. Wait, what if you were the closest? Africa, just right by well, see, Mummy, for instance, is from Spain, and even if you're in Spain, which is next to Africa, you still got to cross all of Africa. So it's a long, long way. That is one of the most patient father. He's full of he's full of knowledge. He is. He teaching he's teaching me something every day. And I need more patience. I need more patience with my own father than with Nico. <laughs> If you're wondering as well, anybody wondering where Thomas the Woodcarver is today? Sail south and turn left at the Indian Ocean. There you go. That's a long, long way. Yeah, if anyone's wondering where Thomas the Woodcarver is today, um, he's doing a job down the field. So I don't know if he's, if he's doing something with the trees or if he's putting gates in or something like that. So uh, he did oh, say he would... Thomas the Woodcarver. No, Gramps is Thomas the Woodcarver, see? But I use that name. We're both Thomas the Woodcarver because our surname is Thomas. See? That's why Daddy's name on here is Di Love Spoons Thomas. Because it's, it's, it's our surname. See, it's Thomas. So we are known as that. But it's more Dad uses that one. Yeah, so he's working down there. He did promise me he'd be back for the end of the live stream. But uh, I think that... The, the job, I think, obviously down the field has taken him a bit longer than they anticipated. So, no sign of him yet. Where are the mats? Where are the what, sorry? The mats. The mats? The mats. Maps? Yeah. On the back of our leaflet, Nico. So, back to the carving. And you can see we're well on with it now. And what I will do from here... After we finish the uh, the live stream, I will take all of this paper that's left over. I'll take that off using the belt sander. So that's how we get a nice finish on it. What are you going to show everyone? The maps. The maps? They're on the leaflets. Where are the leaflets? Go and ask mummy where the leaflets are. And you can show everyone a leaflet. 
Go and ask, is mummy there? Go and ask her, say mummy where the leaflets. There we are, he wants to show everyone a map of where we are. I think he's trying to figure out the relationship between where we are, where South Africa is, and where the US is. A long, long way apart. But thanks to the wonders of modern technology, it's great that we can speak with everyone and we can uh, share what we're doing and hear from yourselves. Now the only thing that I'm possibly thinking of doing to finish this one off um, is to do a little bit more work in terms of shaping in there. Did you find a map? There we are. So you got your map. Let's show everyone a map. There we go. It's on the back of there. There's the map. There. So we're close to places called Narbeth, Saundersfoot and Tembe. And that, that dot there, that's where they, that's where we are, see? Yeah, and which is our house? Which is our house? Well, our house is marked on there, but this is the road that runs by our house. And do you know, our the road that runs by our house, is it's so small, they don't even give it a number. Why they don't even give the number? The the number the number the the if a coronet saw is the same as a shot at ah right I will find that one out for you I will ask Thomas Woodcarver if a coronet is the same I will indeed ask him um because yeah that'll be useful for for yourself with that offer you've had so yeah I will I will get that information on to you we will ask Thomas the Woodcarver see if he's got any info on that if it is, yeah, goodbye. That's a goodbye, that is, if um, if it is the same sort, because uh, the coronet, what it is, we've had two different coronets. Um, one where it was just a table saw and he had a, a separate machine, a planer, but the more recent one that we bought, it was a multi, a sort of multi-tool and it had all these other bits to it that you could attach and it would do all sorts of different jobs. Jobs are similar to what you were describing. There we go. Now I am, um, yeah, I'm fairly pleased with that. I don't know whether to do some more shaping on there. Um, to just shape that around a little bit more. Let's turn it around and make it and make a decision. Let's have a little look. So we're going to just shape shape it around a little bit more like that and the same just going to shape that a little bit more around like that all in all though that design i think that's coming together quite nicely yeah i think that's well on seems to be coming together quite well a little bit of sanding. What I want to just, you know, what it is with a wave, it's sort of you've got that rolling effect. Uh, if it is, I would be selling a napkin. Yeah, no, I will find out for you. I will ask him as soon as he's back here, as soon as he gets back up, I will message you with the uh, with his thoughts on that one. If you've got any photos as well, you could send them across and uh, we'll have a little look. Now, I just noticed that there. That looks suspicious. No, it's nothing. It must be a little... Just noticed that little indent there, which was uh, what we were talking about in terms of... Um, it concerned me for a second in terms of what we were talking about earlier with woodworm and stuff like that. But it's obviously a pinhole because as I carved it, it's disappeared. So it doesn't go any further. Let's have a little look. But what it does mean is to get rid of that pinhole. As you can see, I've shaped this a lot more. Just like so. Shape that all in and around. And we do the same on this side, just shaping it in and around a little bit more. Um, yeah, and we'll see, we'll see how that comes up. So 
So we've taken off a little bit more than I was anticipating there. It was because there was a little, a suspicious looking indent. And I tell you what I think it is. I reckon where it's, where he, where dad has drilled the holes, I think he may have just caught it with the saw and just touched it with the, uh, sorry, not with the saw, with the drill. I think he's just touched it with the drill bit and then come straight back up again. But we had to take all of that mark off because the reason I, the reason I don't think it's anything more sinister is because it was also there on the top of the paper. I knew it was there from, I could see it on the paper. There we are. And I will just ask Mum if she's walking through. He's not back up from the field, is he? Ah, they're coming up now. There we are. Ah, there we are. So he's going to be, he's going to be busy. So I will ask him when he comes back up for you. But there we are. I think we are well on with that design. What I'm going to do from here, I'm going to put it on the belt sander, take away all of that design. There's a little bit of carving. I can just finish off by here. We've got the work to do on the bowl of the spoon as well. And then largely that'll pretty much, we will be there. Um, oh, I'm just thinking as well. Interestingly, having um, Arthur with us, we've been asked to do um, the flower, a pro, oh, what's it called? Um, and I think it's because it's, it's, a, it's a spoon we're working on and there's a South African link. A pro, um, oh, now then, now that's got me thinking. Is it a pro tea? Because of course, one of your sports teams, they're, they're referred to as the pro teas, aren't they? So I think, yeah, we've been asked to do that one there. So that's a, a love spoon that we're going to be working on as well. Just shows you though how open the tradition is and how you can do so many different things. But just to finish off, I'll just show you that spoon, turn it around once more. So we've got to shape all of this. I've got to carve out a little bit on the bowl, just to sort that out and finish it off. We've got the twist on the stem. We've got that Trinity sign, that Eternity knot. Um, we've got the heart. We've got those spilling waves just around it. And then the treble clef and the stars. Hopefully that's interesting. Uh, if you want to know more from the a protein, there we are. Yeah, a protein. We've been asked to put one on a on a love spoon. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, we're gonna have a go at making that. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully that's interesting. Hopefully it's useful. If you've got any questions about the carving that we do, the processes we use, the woods, anything at all, uh, feel free to ask. If we can help in any way, it's, it's, we're always delighted to be able to do so. Thanks for supporting us as always. We really appreciate it. Uh, we hope you all have a good week and all going well. We, we'll be back again next week with a, another live stream. But uh, yeah, thanks for joining us and hope you all have a fantastic